it is time. So as an official licensed professional uh, Tony Rice fanboy, I thought it would be a fun idea to take the Tony Rice albums and rank them in a tier list, uh, just according to my stylistic, completely 100% subjective preferences. That's for the guy who's typing right now. And by the Tony Rice albums, I mean all the Tony Rice albums except for compilations and collaborations, uh, with the exception of these two because they were just too important. By the way, if you don't know how tier lists work, usually you have, I think, six categories, which would be S, A, B, C, D, and F. Today we have five, and I think I'm probably only going to use four because, let's be honest, who puts a Tony Rice album anything lower than S. Okay, so let's not start out with the S tier albums. Um, let's just go ahead and start with California Autumn. It's first in the list anyway. And this is, I believe, Tony's second release, at least his second studio album. And it came out in 75, I believe, um, same year that 0044 was recorded. I think I'm going to put in B tier. Um, that could change later on. It's certainly not a mediocre album, but I sort of have to make room for like a and S tier, because there's going to be so many in those two tiers, especially S tier. While we're on early albums, let's do guitar next. So I'm going to put guitar... I, I re-listened to this one today. It's an early album. I think it came out in 73, and it was his first release. It was originally done for, I think, Sab Watanabe in Japan. It was basically the New South at the time, which was Larry Rice, Tony's brother, and then Bobby Sloan and J.D. Crow. It sounds a lot like the New South instrumentally. It's not like as sophisticated as Tony's later albums. I don't know if I want to put it in B tier or if I'm going to put it in C tier. Well, let's just put it in C tier for fun. Okay, so let's go ahead with our first A tier album. And this is Tony Rice Plays and Sings Bluegrass. And this is a really straight ahead bluegrass album, hence the name. It's basically him picking and singing bluegrass standards. I think the only thing that could like really knock this out of A or S tier and into B tier category is because this is 94. This is like definitely when his voice was on its way out. Um, and you can definitely hear that in the recording, not as much as if he was playing live. I think 94 is actually the, the year that he stopped singing at all. And that's, that's really the only possible detriment to this album. Otherwise, it's it's a Tony Rice bluegrass album. It has all the Tony Rice licks. It's everything you want. Okay, so let's let's talk about the collaborations real quick. Um, so the only two collaborations on this list are Skaggs and Rice and Blake and Rice. And I really just wanted to include these two because they're just so iconic. Um, like, I couldn't not put them on the list, if you know what I mean. Of course, there's also Blake and Rice too. I'm just using Blake and Rice to represent both of them. They're pretty similar stylistically. Uh, Tony Rice and Norman like it's it's amazing. You need to go listen to it. Anyway, um, I am putting these both in A tier. Some of you may be surprised that Skaggs and Rice is not going in S tier because it's such a legendary album. But I feel, I feel like we're gonna have a lot of stuff in S tier, and I really want to save like my personal cream of the crop for there. But I love these two albums. If you pin me against a wall, I might tell you I like Blake and Rice more. That might be because it's two guitars and I'm a guitar nerd, who knows, but um, yeah, both legendary, phenomenal albums. Okay, so let's move on. Let's let's give our first S tier album, and you already know what it is. It's Church Street Blues. So this is such a legendary Tony Rice album. It's basically Tony Rice almost solo. A lot of the tracks are solo. Some of them have Wyatt on them, playing rhythm guitar, and it's it's Tony singing a lot of folk style, playing not too crazy solos. It's not it's none of the jazz space grass stuff. It's a very candid album. It's it's nothing ridiculously over the top. It's just it's Tony Rice and his guitar and him singing and his amazing voice that's still in in good condition at this time. I think this came out in eighty. I don't want to get the year wrong. It might have been 83. I'll put that here. Um, but yeah, True Street Blues, definitely in the S tier category. Okay, so let's do let's do Manzanita. Okay, you already know this going in S tier. And what's special about Manzanita class? Well, it's a bluegrass album with no banjo. And I like that, personally. It was supposed to have a banjo, but then Crow got sick or something, apparently. Um, don't quote me on that. Tony didn't really want anybody else, so they just recorded it banjo -less, and I think it's pretty safe to say that this album changed the world of bluegrass. The The songs are so good, the song selection. I mean, you have Blue Railroad Train, Old Train, Home from the Forest, Ginseng Sullivan. It's, it's just an amazing album, a legendary album. If you haven't listened to it, 
it's definitely a must listen to in the bluegrass world. Okay, so Devlin is a compilation of Mar West and Still Inside, both of which are no longer available. It has all of Mar West except for the Mar East track. Um, I have no idea why that got cut and two of the tracks from Still Inside were cut. Yeah, I'm gonna put this in A tier. I'm not gonna talk too much about the jazz albums because they break the theme just a little bit. Um, okay, Backwaters, this gets S tier for me. This is definitely my favorite Tony Rice jazz album. It's, it's just a really interesting sound. He used an ovation guitar on all of the tracks except Common Ground. I believe the quote goes, that was my Martin, you'd have to be an idiot not to hear that. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's really interesting sound as with Acoustics, which Acoustics is going, let, okay, let, let's actually move Devlin to B tier. Um, and let's put Acoustics in A tier. I said I was gonna rank these stylistically, but this has Swing 51 on it, so. Swing 51, if you don't know, is Tony Rice's first original composition, I believe. It's really, it's got that something special to it in the tune. Definitely go listen to that one if you're into jazz or Tony Rice at all. Um, and if you're not in Tony Rice at all, why are you watching this video? Crossings, okay, this is an interesting one. This is an all instrumental, all gospel project. I'm gonna put it in B tier. It's not trying to be anything like ultra monumental. I feel like when they recorded it, it was sort of like, hey, I feel like I should have an all instrumental hymns album. Okay, cool, let's make it. And what I mean is, it's just, it's a really straight ahead, pretty much no frills album. Um, it's it's very listenable. It's it's not anything super influential. And I, I wouldn't say it's it's necessarily my, my favorite Tony Rice album or anything, but it's just, it's a solid album, and I think that deserves B tier. Let's talk about the 70s release Tony Rice real quick. I'm gonna put it in C tier. Um, again, it's an early album. It's it's definitely not a bad album by any stretch of the means. It's just personally not one of my favorites stylistically, definitely not one of my favorites. I think Tony wrote that it was, he felt like there was something missing from this album. I can kind of hear that when I listen to it. Early Tony stuff is really interesting. It's got a it's got a very interesting sound, definitely recognizable. Um, I like the album, just I feel like I should round up the C tier a little bit. Unit of Measure, this is an interesting one. It's sort of like the polar opposite of the Tony Rice album. It's, it's all instrumental, and to me, I would say that this album represents that kind of sound that Tony Rice was going back to in his later years, the very very, very sophisticated, very jazz influenced sort of sound. I think this came out in the late 90s and what's special about this album to me is I think there's maybe something special in how the guitar was mic'd. I have no idea, I'm not a recording engineer. But I think this album really showcases just the pure tone that Tony pulled out of his guitar and it, it's like you can hear every subtle nuance. It's so full, almost borders on S tier. I'm gonna put this one in A tier. Definitely go check out a track or two of this album, uh, especially something like Shenandoah where the guitar was solo or uh, maybe Jerusalem Bridge, which by the way, banger break on Jerusalem Bridge. Um, before I talk too much, uh, yeah, definitely let me know in the comments if you hear what I'm talking about. Just very lush sound. Cold on the Shoulder, one of the most iconic Tony Rice albums and it's going in S tier. Definitely one of my favorite Tony Rice albums. Um, a lot of very just quintessential Tony Rice songs. Uh, John Hardy, you have Wayfaring Stranger, uh, Cold on the Shoulder, of course. Several Gordon Lightfoot songs like Cold on the Shoulder, Bitter Green. It's, it's an amazing album. Definitely one of the first ones I would recommend. You have Bela Fleck playing the banjo. I think Vassar Clemens, Mark Chats, Sam Bush, and Jerry Douglas, I think is the, the lineup. Um, really, really good lineup. If you watch the videos of Tony playing on stage at I think Merle Fest, I, it's, it's on YouTube as like Tony Rice All-Star Jam or something. That's almost this lineup with the exception of Mark O'Connor on fiddle. Definitely one of those iconic sounds to my ears. Finally, I, I wasn't expecting to do these two last. Me and my guitar and Native American. Overall, stylistically, me and my guitar is my favorite Tony Rice album. I, I would say that if I could like swap out some songs from me and my guitar and put my favorite songs from Native American in, that would definitely be my favorite Tony Rice album. Unfortunately, that doesn't exist. But yeah, the sound I'm talking about is, I'm not exactly sure how to describe it, but if you listen to uh, Four Strong Winds, Hard Love, Brother to the Wind, and Urge for Going um, on these two particular albums, you'll hear what I'm talking about. It's basically, I think it was Bill Wolf on piano. I think it's a very, very moving sound. Um, 
personally at least. I absolutely love these two albums stylistically. I'm a big fan of that style even though you know there's not that much of it out uh, in the Tony Rice universe. <laughs> um, and, and you know maybe Tony singing slow sad songs with piano and saxophone in the background is not what most people think of when they think Tony Rice but I don't know. I like it. Me and my guitar has tipper on it so there, there's that too. <laughs> A lot of Gordon Lightfoot songs. Anyway, this was fun. Hope you enjoyed it. That is the official Tony Rice tier list. Uh, challenge it at your own peril, and I will see you all in the next video. Go listen to a Tony Rice album.